I'm here on a bracing winter day here in the seaside town of Brighton, about to meet Marion Gritton, who has a secret love affair with a pet, a rabbit called Elwood. A few years ago, Marion became disabled after a horse riding accident and felt that getting a pet would lift her spirits. He's like my wee mad mate. It's, it sounds silly, but he's changed my life. He just is so affectionate, he's so loving. Um, kisses me all the time with little licks and uh, just makes me laugh so much. Every day is different. You're a wonderful girl. You got a wonderful smell. Elwood has become inseparable for Marion to the point that he follows her every move. As well as keeping a close eye on his owner, he has also become very jealous when people try to get close to her. Oh, it affects my social life quite badly because he's very possessive and he doesn't particularly like men sitting next to me. Um, he'll actually try and wee on them and if they get up to move from where they've been sitting on the sofa next to me, um, he will wee and poo as to scent, you know, his mark um, to cover their scent which is really, really embarrassing. But it's not just a man problem. Elwood is so desperate to get Marion's full-time attention, he has started to bite and claw at her whenever he is not given enough affection. He's really, really affectionate. He'll, he licks me, but he can get a wee bit over amorous with my leg, which causes an awful lot of pain and discomfort for me trying to get him away. It hurts, really hurts my neck, and it also ends up with, at one time, 151 little bite marks. Marion's best friend Troy, who comes to look after her once a week, has very strong feelings about Elwood's inappropriate behaviour. I'm at the, the point where I feel that Marion feels maybe awkward about having friends over because of Elwood's behaviour. Um, and I can understand no one, you know, wants to have people around and the rabbit jumps up on the sofa and wheeze on them and, you know, wheeze around them. It's, it's not a nice thing. The more serious side of it as well is that if she's going, you know, just walking to the kitchen, going to the bathroom, He'll run under her legs. He, he wants to be everywhere where she is. And of course, if she were to fall, he could do all sorts of damage that we just, you know, I don't even want to think about, to be honest. Next month, I'm going to have a body cast put on from my forehead down to my waist, um, which worries me because it'll be even more difficult for me to fend him off. Through a medical examination, I could see that Elwood was a healthy bunny, though I did notice that he was still an entire male, which was something that may need addressing. Well, Elwood's a gorgeous little rabbit. Uh, I really do like him. I think he's a very, very bright boy. But I take on what Troy's been saying, that he's concerned with your physical well-being, with all of the behaviour that he's doing, and also that he's, uh, he's being a little bit too amorous. Basically, the diagnosis is he's sexually frustrated. He's a randy little rabbit, your bunny. He's been hand-reared, as you mentioned. He's only known humans, and now as he's developed through you know, up to a year, he's got all that testosterone flying around in his system, and now he's looking for a mate, and guess who he's chosen? He's chosen you, lucky girl. So there's quite a few things that we're going to be able to do to help to turn this around. One of them, though, is going to involve a little snip. So let's just pop into the next room away from prying ears. Rabbit, rabbit, yep, yep, rabbit, rabbit, bunny, bunny yep, jabber, rabbit. I really think that by castrating him, he will uh, be a lot less uh, affectionate in the sexual way, which is what he's doing at the moment when he's sort of trying to mount your leg and all that sort of stuff. That'll do 90% of the work, but 10% of the work is yours to do, and that's in the behavioural sense. And what you're going to be doing is just a lot more tough love. At the moment, you're letting him have the run of the house. He, he follows you when you go into the bathroom. He licks you, he bites you. All those sort of things are going to stop. Mm -hmm. You're going to stop him from following you everywhere. And then when he does do these bad behaviours, you're going to use this. And you're going to spray him with just a tiny bit of water. We're not going to shoot him. A tiny little spray. And what that's going to do is make him realise that he's doing a bad behaviour because he's going to go, ooh, it's like a wet slap. And he's going to be shocked into thinking, right, I've done the wrong thing. Also, I'm going to get you to make a tiny little shriek noise, which is similar to when they're in pain, they make a shriek. So give me a shriek. Uh, Hiya. Come on. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> sort of, like a, like a squealing pig kind of noise. Rabbit, rabbit, yep, yep, rabbit, rabbit, bunny, bunny, yep, jabber, rabbit. We're in the doorway because the meeting process is when Elwood acts up the most. So what we're going to do is change the way that all the guys come and visit the house, all the guys. Uh, basically, Troy is going to come on in, but before he does that, he's going to call you about 10 minutes before he's going to arrive. You're going to then put Elwood away using a treat and then ignore him for 10 minutes. 
Troy's then gonna come on in, you're gonna take your seat at the couch, be normal, do your normal interactions. Just then when you're about to leave Troy, you're gonna be then giving the rabbit attention. You're gonna be plying him with treats and playing with him with toys. You're gonna to be like the favorite uncle, okay? So that's gonna foster a relationship between him and men, okay? And you're gonna leave and then marry him. What you're going to do is ignore him again for another 10 minutes after that. During that time, you're actually gonna get a damp cloth, wipe it on his face, and then you're gonna actually wipe onto the couch. And what that's actually gonna do is transfer his scent back onto the couch so that when you release him, hopefully he will then stop marking. Rabbit, rabbit, yep, yep, rabbit, rabbit, bunny, bunny, yep, jabber, rabbit. Well, after a few weeks, Brighton certainly hasn't got any warmer. We're about to see if Elwood's behaviour's cooled down a little bit and if Marion's been able to keep up with the training. Hi, oh, gorgeous, how are you? Oh, All righty, very well, very well. I've been dying to hear how things have been going. They've been so, absolutely brilliant. Yeah? yeah. Really? He's stopped weeing. Yep. His manicness has just completely calmed down. Brilliant. No biting. Legs, though they may be white, yes. no longer purple. <laughs> Much with better. Bruises. Yeah. And um, he's just been absolutely wonderful. So good. Fantastic. Um, well, obviously, it's a mix of the training and also that castration bringing those testosterone levels down. So. Very successful, and he's been more of a gentleman with oh, you. Oh, he's been Troy. absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Before it was an absolute nightmare, and the whole thing of weighing on the sofa, and it's gone. It's Fantastic. Excellent. He's a change bunny. That is so <laughs> good. So, you know, what does the future hold now with you and Elwood? Well, I've got a new trick of my own. Do you? Yes. I got <laughs> some my little girlfriend, and she's not as much of an old bag as me. Yes, Everyone this morning wishes you all the best for your recovery and it's been an absolute privilege to help you, so well done. Thank, Thank you. you so much. No worries. <laughs> Thank you.